Welcome back to our next episode of Meet the Musician. I'm here with our principal cellist, Dr. Shay Cole. Shay, how are you today? I'm good, Tim. Thanks so much for having me. Oh, we're so glad that you're here, and we're going to get a chance to learn more about you as a person, as a musician, and uh, you know what? Let's get started. Tell us a little bit about where you grew up. I grew up in Boise, Idaho, and was very much encouraged to participate in music and athletics from a very young age. And um, actually, one of my very first uh, musical experience uh, was in the womb. I was uh, with my mom already while she was um, playing a lead in Don Giovanni, the opera. So uh, I was... Um, I came along very quickly in the efforts to have a second child. I'm the middle child. Um, so she thought she had a little bit more time to, uh, to plan me out but, and uh, do her role in Don Giovanni. But uh, I uh, came right away and um, was, was there for that. So obviously, mom's a musician. Um, so growing up in a, in a musical family, what was that like? Uh, there was more onstage operatic things uh, for the production of Madame Butterfly. Uh, a few years later, when I was three years old or so, uh, my mom was the lead soprano in that opera, and I played the child. Um, so that's probably about maybe 15, 20 minutes of just sitting on stage and um, just being a complete baby, but surrounded by, you know, I was already in, in orchestra and, and in the, attending all those rehearsals and, and stuff like that and listening to all that music from a, a super young age. Um, and then that continued with piano lessons. Um, but at the absolute first opportunity that I had to say, hey, I'm switching from piano to cello, I, I took it. And it happened because our orchestra director came in to demonstrate all the string instruments and she was a cellist herself. So she played some, you know, nice stuff on the violin, you know, pretty, pretty simple. And then grabbed the cello and really, really let it rip with a, a really fast scherzo. And um, I said, that's it. I've got to learn this. I'm going to learn the fast song. You know, I'm going to learn the, learn the cello, and you're going to teach me the fast song. Um, and she became my first private teacher uh, that I had from fifth grade until ninth grade. So once you heard that cello, you were hooked. No looking back. It was just instant, absolutely instantaneous. Now, did you continue doing, you mentioned you were involved with, with different sports. Did you continue doing other activities besides um, music and cello as you were growing up? I did. I was a real avid skier and golfer, and um, really one of the wonderful things about growing up in Boise, Idaho, is that you have the variety of activities uh, like that. So um, the winter sports stuff, I, I took pretty darn seriously. I joined the racing team in, in fourth grade, and um, you know we would run our gates and do all our training. Uh, but we also had a kind of a habit of getting away from the race course and trying to find all the big rocks and jumps and bushes and anything on the mountain that you could possibly jump off of. We went and found, uh, explored every inch of the mountain called Bogus Basin is the one that's closest to, to Boise. So obviously you uh, decided not to pursue the X Games career. <laughs> when did you uh, decide to, to really make cello and, and music your focus? These things were definitely all happening at the same time. I had already kind of decided, oh, okay, you know, baseball, football, some of the other sports that I was doing, uh, you know, let's let those go in favor of music. But skiing was much, much harder to let go of. Um, but uh, ninth grade Allstate was, um, we were playing Tchaikovsky's Fifth Symphony, and the second movement started, and it has, you know, this slow-moving string harmonies, violas, cello basses, very dark, slow harmonies, and I was just so overwhelmed by the power of that music. Um, that it felt like, 
this has to be something that that I'm that I'm doing regularly. If if not all the time, this the sound of this orchestra um, is just so interesting um, and so great. So you decided to pursue music. You went to Rochester, New York, to the Eastman School of Music, and then you went on to Ohio University. What what was the next step after that? Yeah, so I had the, those music education experiences, um, and as I was coming to the end of the masters, I was considering, okay, how am I going to start my career outside of school? Um, how can I start my career outside of school? I had not really been a full-time professional musician yet. That was my my aim, of course. A friend of mine who was playing in an orchestra in Mexico mentioned that he was going to be returning to the U.S. and I said, "Well, what's going to happen with your your job down there? Uh, I would uh, I'd be really interested." And he said, "Okay, here's the information. You can send send a recording." Uh, and that was all in the fall of 2008. Um, and getting the opportunity to go to Mexico and play full time, concert and a half every week, you know, works out to around 60 or 70 concerts a year. Um, so being able to do that for seven years was just a real privilege. Now, skiing in Idaho to then playing cello in Mexico seems like a, a big jump. What was it like, uh, you know, culturally and musically playing now in a, in a foreign country? Uh, it was, I think, the best experience that I had in my life. Definitely was interested in any opportunity anywhere. To, to me, it did, not, it did not have to be in the United States. Um, at that time in my life, I was just feeling so strongly that um, that I just wanted to start playing. I just wanted to get somewhere and start rehearsing and start playing. And um, and luckily that that happened. So after your time in Mexico, um, you did then pursue that doctorate. Where in and what did you focus in on that? I did. I spent um, several years in Mexico kind of saving, saving money and then flying myself to auditions for full-time jobs or better paying jobs. So I kind of thought, am I really playing well enough to win one of the jobs that I would really love to have? Would it benefit me to benefit my playing to go back and study a little bit more and um, I was found an incredible opportunity through the University of Miami. Most of their grad, graduate programs uh, are full tuition waiver along with a small stipend for playing in the Henry Mancini Institute. Uh, so the opportunity to have a, a doctorate on a full scholarship with even a little bit of, of stipend kicked in there, um, it really appeared to me that I would be able to come to Florida, um, attend the University of Miami, and be working professionally during during that doctorate time without making a huge financial sacrifice on, on my part. So now at school you you dabble with conducting it and composing as well? I did. Those opportunities meant the world to me. Uh, as far as the composing end of things, uh, I really just wanted to somehow apply the knowledge that we'd gotten in our theory theory classes. Uh, feel like I could work with the music like like it was um, woodworking or um, something more practical or something. Uh, but uh, getting a chance to study with Dr. Heinemann was wonderful. And um, as far as the conducting side of things, I always have been very, very interested in that. Um, but uh, once again, kind of being able to use the degree to get different types of formal training in classical music was, was, was really important to me because I already had two performance degrees, you know, getting a doctorate, needed to have another dimension for me beyond performance. 
So uh, being able to get some formal training in composition and conducting really rounded out the experience for me and made it feel like I was doing something new, even though I'm still in the same trajectory of cello performance degrees. And that's what led us, obviously, to, uh, to your journey here with the Venice Symphony. Uh, what has your experience been like? Um, and you start with us um, this past season as our principal cello player. It's been wonderful. It's a welcoming community, not just in the members of the orchestra, but uh, a community enthusiasm for the group. And uh, that, that that enthusiasm is there and the enthusiasm is consolidated around Maestro Quinn um, is definitely something special. So um, both myself and my girlfriend, Christina, the principal bassoon player, uh, have been really honored to be a part of it. She actually got the job first. Well, now that I'm hired in there, a quick question, do you need, because <laughs> you use a cellist. Uh, so it turned out that yes, they could, and um, I sent my tape. So uh, all of that you know, was really um, an exciting start to the gig, being able for Christina and I to be able to do it together. Um, is really good uh, to have um, a young, energetic conductor um, who's looking for really good results um, has been also another really great part of joining the group. And we're actually looking forward to later on through our Meet the Musician series to get a, a chance to talk to Christina and uh, talk about her journey to what got her to the Venice Symphony, but we're so excited to have you both here. And it's funny, you mentioned graduating in December, but you missed your graduation, is that correct? Where, where were you? I was doing the Nutcracker with the Venice Symphony and the Sarasota Cuban Ballet School, um, which I always loved doing, doing the Nutcracker. But those particular days, that first Nutcracker rehearsal was on December 12th, which was also graduation day. So I, you know, it's a bummer. I would have loved to put on the regalia and get out there, but what better thing to do as a musician than to get out there and work? It, uh, it went like this on the night of December 11th. I got the email saying, you are completely done. Congratulations, Dr. Cole. Um, and then an hour after we got that email, we were in the car uh, driving over from Miami to uh, Venice for for that rehearsal, so. And you're off and running. Well, we are so excited to, uh, to uh, celebrate you and, and celebrate you through music. So one of the things that we're hoping to do with our Meet the Musician series is, is learn something, whether it's, you know, how an oboe works, what's the difference between a regular trombone and a bass trombone. But one of the questions I really want to know for me personally is, what is the role of the principal player of a big section like the cello section? I mean, we know you get that great seat in the front row, but what is your responsibility? What happens with a principal player? It is um, a very, uh, I, I feel that's a very important role. And one of the things that was said to me about it a lot in my training was, um, we need the cello sections or we need the string principles to lead more would be something that would fre frequently said to me. Um, and I'd kind of think, you know, can't, can't people see the conductor? You know, should, should I really be leading everything? Shouldn't, shouldn't everything really be going there? Um, but as my career went on, I started to observe uh, really excellent principal players in, in a different way. And I started to notice that the leadership from really excellent players tended to coincide with a, a musical moment. And so in other words, sometimes you'll see somebody moving a lot and you might think, well, the, what, what's happening? Um, and, but it is really a major way of, of how we communicate. I know one of the things that our patrons love is when we release that schedule. Here's what this year's show is going to be. And I know that when you look through the schedule of, of the songs we're going to play, there was one thing that jumped out to you as a cello player that's like, 
Yes, here it is. What, what was that song? Absolutely. For any principal cello player, the overture to William Tell is a huge honor uh, to be able to play that. Um, having it programmed gives me the feeling that, um, that the conductor trusts me as a principal cellist to handle the extremely difficult opening solo, extremely demanding opening solo of that piece. Um, and like you said, when, when that program comes out, I don't, it's almost like it jumps off the page at you. Um, and it's a good measure of excitement and a good measure of fear too, <laughs> a little, a little bit too, um, that just says like, wow, I, that is going to happen. Uh, you know, there's going to be this moment where the entire stage stops and I'm the only person playing you know, for, for a couple of bars. So um, it's a huge thrill, it's a huge responsibility, and um, it's the type of thing where you're practically preparing for it from the instant you see it. You did something a little different with your performance of this today, is that correct? Right, so the opening of the William Tell Overture um, is scored for about two and a half minutes with five solo cellos and two basses. Um, the timpani gets a little drum roll in there in the middle of that too. So out of your entire orchestra, um, the composer has decided to really have a two and a half minute chamber episode where um, the sound of, of the cellos and, uh, is, is just so featured. Um, everybody else is, is, is there. So the first five cellos are one to a part. Uh, the other three cellos are just relaxing for two and a half minutes. Um, and the two basses um, are, are there. So I can't tell you how much I'm looking forward to playing that with all my colleagues. But in this version, I used the acapella app to uh, record all seven of those parts um, by myself. And uh, so seven shays all trying to be on the, all on the same page with each other. And um, I think they did a pretty good job. They still had some ensemble problems here and there, but. <laughs> we'll have to talk to that principal player to see if we can work out those issues. <laughs> yeah, see if he can be a better leader for his section there. Well, here it is. Here is seven shays performing the opening solo from the William Tell Overture by Giochini Rossini.
incredible that was so cool and uh, you learned a, a new app by doing it thank you so much for taking the time and all the efforts i know what it is to do video work and that turned out awesome thank you my pleasure so i like to end our conversations with the musicians by asking them if they have any words of wisdom or advice or motto that they constantly have that they'd like to share with our audience Okay, let's see what I can come up, come up with here. I, I kicked around a, a few ideas for this because I do feel that it's, it's very important. Um, uh, I guess as far as my, my really biggest passion is, is playing in large ensemble. Um, yeah, I like being a soloist. Yeah, I like being chamber uh, musician, but nothing, nothing can do what an orchestra does. Um, and so for that, you need a lot of people. So I would really recommend to anybody who's going to be um, a professional musician, uh, be very kind and considerate with all, all of your colleagues. Uh, you need them, they need you. Um, and, uh, and it's a beautiful, beautiful thing to be, to be making music together. So uh, it's a, a very important, uh, to me, to um, be positive, to have a positive attitude, even as we, we, we try to really perfect things. And that, that can create a real challenge. We're trying to do something very well. So an, an intensity will kind of naturally come, come about from that. Um, but the desire to do things extremely well, I think should never compromise the positivity of the, the musical environment. Shay, your time was great today. We can't wait to be back and seeing you on the stage soon. We enjoyed seven Shays, but we can't, can't wait to see one Shay with our whole Venice Symphony around you. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. My pleasure, Tim. Thanks so much. Thank you, Shay, and thank you for creating that very intricate recording of the William Tell Overture for us. We look forward to hearing that performed on stage by the Venice Symphony coming up in March, part of our Game of Rome series. And we look to continue our collaboration with the Sarasota Cuban Ballet with the Nutcracker as well. For information about these performances or any of the concerts planned by the Venice Symphony, please visit our website or contact the office. On behalf of all of us at the Venice Symphony, we look forward to seeing you again soon.